This is Jonathan from Rupert Neve Designs, and today I'm going to show you how to set up and use your new 5254 dual diode bridge compressor. You will need some cables to get started. Today we're going to use two pairs of XLR cables. You're going to want to take your input source and plug it into the dual diode bridge compressor. Then take another XLR, plug it into the output, and that will feed your interface, a mixer, or another piece of gear. You'll repeat this on the other side. There's one more feature on the back panel. That is the sidechain insert, send, and return. This allows you to insert an equalizer and turn the dual diode bridge compressor into a frequency dependent compressor, i.e. something like a de -esser. Now it's time for some sound. Let's start with some initial settings to get you going. Put the threshold all the way up. Set the ratio control at two over one. Go ahead and set the gain at zero dB. Set the timing control at medium and set the blend at 100%. You want to make sure you're driving the dual diode bridge compressor fairly hard, i.e. somewhere around plus 14, plus 18. The reason for this is the harder you hit the diode bridge itself, the more harmonics it spits out and gives you more of that vintage, vibe, and character Rupert Neve is so famous for. Now it's time for some sound. Let's engage the dual diode bridge compressor. You want to bring down the compression threshold until you see a couple of dB of compression on the gain reduction meter. And remember, you can switch the meters from output level to gain reduction by hitting the switches on the front panel. The timing control affects the attack and the release of the compression circuitry. When you engage the fast control, it makes the attack and release twice as fast. You're going to want to experiment with different speeds depending on the program material and what you're recording. Experiment with the blend control. When you mix in a little bit of the original source material's dynamics, this is actually called parallel compression, and this can sound really cool on drums, percussion, bass, and guitars. Use the red gain control knob to make up for the amount of compression you're using, and also to set the right drive level into the next piece of gear or interface. If you see the red peak LED flash a few times, don't worry because you still have 3 dB of headroom beyond when the peak LED flashes. If you're working with program material with a lot of low frequencies, or you just don't want the low frequencies to affect the compression as much, engage the sidechain high pass filter and sweep it up to about 125 Hz. You may need to go lower or higher depending on the program material. Remember, this doesn't actually cut the low frequencies to your program, it cuts the low frequencies to the sidechain or how much it's affecting the amount of compression you're receiving. For stereo material, you may want to engage the link switch. This sums the sidechain control voltage for both channels, and the highest level has priority. Remember, you're still going to want to set the controls identically on both sides of the unit. When you engage the link switch, this provides equal amounts of compression on both channels. Now, for some types of program material, it may sound wider or more stereo if you don't engage the link switch, but you do set the controls identically on both sides. Now it's time for you to start using your new Rupert Neve Designs Dual Dial Bridge Compressor. If you want to find out more about all our gear, please go to rupertneve.com and please feel free to contact us with any questions. <music>